think I'll do a real quick video on FET matching here. What I did was I took one of my um, 24 FET boards. This uh, setup is to run four FETs high, four FETs low on each H bridge. So one of these boards is actually to be connected to one phase leg of the motor. As you can see, I have three here in total. This one's upside down the way I'm going to put the FETs in. Um, what I did was I took, got it built up, got my gate resistors in there at 10 ohms per separate gate resistor per MOSFET to run there. Um, I hooked up a ground wire to the uh, source for those MOSFETs. This will be the low side MOSFET. And then basically I just have a little positive wire that goes down underneath because I just got them shoved in there for testing. I got the positive wire underneath there um, to be able to get a reading for this test. So all I'm doing is I've got a little variable voltage power supply here for um, just to be able to test things in my little workshop here I got in the basement of my house. Um, I got it set at 3 volts. I also tried it at 4.5 volts. So as you can see here, I actually switched the two MOSFETs from here to here, number 3 and 4. I switched them around and tried this test twice and I actually basically verified that I was basically really close on and it was actually giving me a proper reading and then I tried it again at 3 volts um, that's 3 volts applied to the gate and you can see at 3 volts it's uh, you know like it's actually probably 11 million ohms whatever that uh, reading is on that scale with this multimeter this is a cheaper multimeter you know you can only trust it so far but at the same time it's giving me consistent readings right across the board so I'll just give you a little demonstration of how I tested the um, this is basically Miller Plateau matching as zombies and a few others have pointed out prior to zombies and it's a good thing to do because as you can see here MOSFET number one and MOSFET number four are super close and so those two should be in a group so every every set of boards here every group of four MOSFETs should be matched as close as you can get them because then those four are going to turn on and they're going to during the transition stage, they're going to conduct the equal amount or the closest possible to the equal amount of current through them, the way this uh, controller is going to work. Now, part of the reason I'm doing this, I designed these boards for spacing for TO-264 MOSFETs and 247, so I can kind of pick and choose. I'm using, these ones are going to be IRF. P4568, so good to 150 volts. I won't ever run it that high. I'll probably run it probably like... 28S, no, something like that. Yeah, I think 28S, that works out. Um, so, I'll just plug that in and try it. As you can see there, there's some of the MOSFETs I've blown up on my 18 FET controller. It's running Colossus right now. And part of the reason is because I did not Miller Plateau match any of them. And the bigger reason is the layout's just crap on that board. So, as you can see these boards, I have a whole bunch of room with different holes all along the board for caps. I'm just experimenting where I want to put the caps. Um, I should probably spend more time designing things on the computer before I get the boards in, but this is going to be a step towards where I really want it to be because you can put the caps right across the, the drain and source of the high and low side. And so, anyways, it's set on 3 volts. Just going to that up. I'm going to plug it in. Got my... Now we have to go to the highest. If you have an auto range of meter, it's good. Now I haven't touched those MOSFETs for a while, so we can get a bit of a reading here. Um, I don't think I have a way of holding everything too easy though. So let's see if I can maybe get a reading here, just like this. And you can see Kind of hard to do with one hand and one hand holding the phone. There we are. Point zero four. We can go down on the scale. So that's 13 on that scale. So it's 13,000 ohms. That one's 12.4. 12.5. You know, it, it does change as you leave them on, but they're not 
they're not going to heat up that much with just gate voltage applied with no current actually going through them. That one there, I'm not getting a good, there we go, 12.8, and that's this one. Then we'll see if we can get the last one. Need something 12.6. So 12.8 was shown on this one here, and 12.6 was shown on this one here. This one here, we can go back, it should be the highest one. Come on, stay on there, you son of a bitch. There, oh, two fingers. So it's 13.0, and that is the highest one. That's that one right there, it's the highest one. So that is an example of how easy that test is actually to do. It's super easy, especially if you got a board here that's already set up basically to power your gates. Um, like I said, I can just slide these MOSFETs right out. I don't want to mismatch them now that I know, but this one has the highest resistance. So that MOSFET goes there, and this MOSFET goes here. This MOSFET goes here, and this MOSFET. Goes here. So it'll be like that. Those are the readings. So now what I gotta do is I gotta divide them into groups. Basically, I gotta find some tape. I don't know if I have any masking tape, but otherwise what I'm gonna just do is write on a piece of paper what this one is, put it in a pile, and then I'll keep writing the numbers as I build the pile. And, um, yeah, have them. I might test at two voltages like this, 4.5 and 3.0, which works really good to the gates. And you can go back and forth and double check. And if you're unsure of things, I just switch two MOSFETs around. And like I said, when switching these two, it actually switched which one's red higher or lower. And it actually will help narrow down which MOSFETs are going to be better to have in a group together. It should be. It's a really easy and it should be something good for pushing controllers to their limits. The more you want to push them to their, you know, like if you were to look here, these are um, the 4568s. They say they can run um, 171 amps, but if you scroll down here, that's actually, everybody calls this data sheet Kool-Aid, but when you look at it, it's at 10 volts that they're kind of testing this stuff at. So it says that 10 volts drain the source. So like that would basically be your battery charge up to 10 volts at 25 degrees Celsius. You can run it at 171 amps. Well, that doesn't really help us when we want to run 130 volts off the charger or something like that. So then you're going to be looking, you know, 100 degrees Celsius when it's hot, 10 volts again, 121 amps. So if you want to get anywhere as close to numbers like that, you've got to have all your MOSFETs in parallel um, a lot uh, closer to each other. But um, what you can actually look at here is the... Um, max safe minimum operating chart and that'll actually show you what's actually safe for an amount of time and at a certain voltage and when you start looking up on the 200 volt number you see you're well below actually it's 150 volt on this MOSFET you're well below 10 amps which is retarded but it only has 100 microsecond as the top amount of measurement time I'm going to be running these um, with a 25 I think it's uh, 20 kilohertz, I think, works out to 12.5, or is it? No, I can't remember the math right now, but it's definitely way less than 100 microseconds, somewhere around maybe 25 microseconds we can kind of look at. So then you go down to, like, a, this one is for an IR or IXFK230N20T MOSFET, a bigger 200-volt MOSFET. If you look here, the max space, maximum safe operating area actually gives you a 25 microsecond reading, which actually is something that can apply to us. And at 200 volts, which is its maximum safe range, it actually says if you stay below 25 microseconds on time, it'll pulse about 320 amps. You know, like that's just incredible. I'm going to run probably 150 volts under load, 170 off the charger with those ones is my plan with that controller. And it's really cool to see what they can do now. When you're doing repetitive pulses and you have the diodes conducting current and you are basically during a PWM period, your PWM period at low RPM might be 
you know, like 800 microseconds, you kind of have to take all that into consideration as well. And you can't quite push it to the 25 microsecond um, zone there. Anyway, but uh, it should definitely, this stuff should definitely help it quite a bit.